Good evening. Welcome to the Pearl Report. I'm Diana Lin. Mainland China's nationwide university entrance exam this month tests students on knowledge garnered over more than 10 years of education. In nine hours, over two days, their fate is sealed. So this annual affair is marked by cram schools, fanfare and a lot of stress. The Pearl Report looks at the personal and social costs of this exam system and asks if it needs to be reformed. Before dawn, this road in Mao Tan Chang County in Anhui province is already filled with 12th graders heading for school. In the academic building is a digital countdown to the university entrance exam. Classrooms are quickly filled with students, latecomers are relegated to the corridor. In this 70 square meter room, 170 students sit at desks piled with books and exam papers. These pupils have already flunked the exam before and fear a second failure. I'm happy in my pain as long as I progress. At any cost, I will succeed in the 2014 university entrance exam. Even at recess, students crowd the corridors clutching textbooks and reciting aloud some mechanically repeating passages by rote. With most of its students getting into universities in recent years, Mao Tan Chang High School attracts over 10,000 pupils a year from out of town, accompanied by their parents. They've spiked the local population from 20,000 to over 50,000. The school has 20,000 pupils, prompting the sobriquet Asia's biggest exam factory. But most of the students here are not elite, but are those intent on memorizing reams of exam material. For the university entrance exam, the top universities admit the first round of students. Lesser universities and private colleges enroll the second and third rounds, while vocational schools come last. In 2013, Mao Tan Chang High School sent over 11,000 first-time candidates and repeat students to the exam. More than 9,000 students were admitted in the first or second rounds, including some 2,500 into leading universities. But the top marks scored in the arts only ranked 85th and science 60th in the province. Still, many out-of-town students, along with their parents, flock to Mao Tan Chang. With limited space in the dormitories, local residents rent out rooms. That's become their prime income source. Ms. Deng, who lives in Anhui's capital of Hefei, came to Mao Tan Chang with her son to study his grade 12th year before the exam. To optimize the situation, she spent 11,000 yuan each semester to rent two rooms. She also bought a full set of home appliances. He has a hard time studying. That's inevitable. But I can't strive to make his living conditions better. Mao Tan Chang High School is a public school. Its admissions are regulated, so it set up Jin An High School, a private school with shareholders. Sharing their resources, the two schools are able to enroll many repeat students. Annual fees are set according to previous exam results. The highest can top 50,000 yuan, raking in 100 million yuan yearly. Along with rental and other living expenses, a 12th grader can spend 100,000 yuan studying here for a year. 12th grade student Wu Mang has asthma, so the school allows her to study at home and rest in the afternoon. She wanted to study at Mao Tan Chang. My friend told me as long as I don't die, I will go to university. On her first day in school, she was made to copy words as punishment. I failed dictation, 32 words, each copied 30 times, 960 words. I remember them well. First time, I cried as I copied. She says teachers required students to tell on each other when they detect errant behavior. 
In nightly study sessions, we're given lists clearly marked for students chatting, playing games on cell phones, reading novels, or using some electronic gear. Many people are caught having love affairs. You have to fill in the lists. You can't leave them blank. Wu Ma says she's seen teachers wield corporal punishment. In the class next to ours, the class teacher took a thick book. The boys and girls stood in a row, and the teacher banged the book on their heads. This environment is not conducive to healthy minds. It's terrible, too terrible. Twelfth grade student Liu Juan goes home at 11 every night, not to rest, but to continue studying. The exam is imminent, and she's worried she won't get into university. In gatherings, if you failed to enter university and others got in, they look down on you. Her parents have to work in their hometown, so her grandma has come to look after her. Granny always warmed up Liu Juan's bed for her sleep. <laughs> But Granny's love and care aggravate the pressure on Liu. She accompanies me every day. What if I failed? In order to get into a university, some students study music, fine arts or other specialties in order to take the exams for professions. This way, some students can jump from the third round to the second round of admissions. Compared with other art and culture subjects, fine arts is easier to learn in a shorter time. Teacher Tao Xiaoling says some provinces have over 100,000 students taking fine arts. To boost the university admission rate, school teachers encourage students in the arts stream to take fine arts. Honestly, many students basically study fine arts as a jumping board into a university. And compared with students in towns and rural areas, those in large cities have an advantage too. Over a decade ago, mainland China invested many resources to develop 112 top universities. One third are located in Beijing and Shanghai. At Peking University, 30% of admissions are local students. For example, only one in 8,000 students from Anhui province manages to enroll in Peking University, while about one out of 200 students in Beijing gets in. Gao Junjing, born in a rural area in Hebei province, is a 12th grade student in his county's high school. Her father had broken his leg in a car accident and had steel nails driven in to mend his bones. It's time to take the nails out, but he refuses because he doesn't want to distract his daughter from her studies. <laughs> This is her final challenge. She gets distracted, she'd have poorer results. Can we let all her studies over more than 10 years go to waste in just a few days? Junjing thinks studying is the only way out for children born in rural areas. Rural kids who want to get out can only rely on exams to climb up step by step to raise my family status. The university entrance exam will definitely change my destiny. At least if I do well, I won't have to stay in the village forever. Along this highway leading to Hangshui County in Hebei province are many advertisements for schools. Hangzhou High School is well known nationwide. It's triumphed in university entrance exams for 14 years. In 2013, 104 of its students were admitted to key institutions such as Tsinghua University and Peking University. Every university has an admissions quota for different provinces. Last year, Hangzhou High School took up 80% of the two universities' quotas for her bay. Many 12th grade students in Hangzhui High School come from nearby counties and live at the school. They get only one day off a month, meaning they leave at 5 p.m. and return at 9 a.m. the next day. Parents who haven't seen their kids for a month flock to pick them up. 
Some busy themselves trimming their children's nails, others hand over bags of daily supplies and snacks. The proprietor of a store nearby says, as a local resident, he's very proud of the school. Here, we hope our kids get into Hong Shui High School. Getting in is a step closer to enrolling in university. It's tough, but how can you enter Tsinghua or Peking University otherwise? It's definitely stressful. Parents feel sorry, but it is only for three years. Go for it. Besides Hang Shui High School, Hang Shui No. 2 High School is also well known, and the latter is always trying to catch up. At about 5 a.m., students at No. 2 are already training on the playground. After lining up, they immediately lift up their books and read out loud. How do 12th graders cope with the stress? Well, some can't, and they end in tragedy. More on that after the break. Stay with us. Yeah.